delivering a sermon back when I was about 12 years old. It wasn't very long after my 12th birthday at all. My uncle, who is the same age as I, I, as I am, went off with his friends to pray. And they had a little like a card table type deal. And my granddad heard me preaching. And so he took it and he raised it a little bit to make it look like a pulpit. And I'm, I'm, I'm preaching up a storm. And 30 minutes later, my grandma comes in. She says, well, there's James, my little preacher. He'll always be my little preacher. Now, doesn't that tell you something? And then, a little over two years later, I'm at uh, Medessa Heights Baptist Christian School. And they have this little uh, raised style desk thing. And I'm out there preaching outside the school. And one of the deacon's wives who runs the cafeteria, she saw it. And, you know, and all the kids went outside, and, and she gathered all the kids around, and she said, Kids, you hear, you hear what James is like? Hey, he's, he's a little preacher boy. He may, he may, he may grow up to be a preacher. Well, in the roundabout way, I did, but in a much better formula, like the, the restoration of the gospel. I'm gonna tell you something. I first heard about the church when I was 14, and it's like I wanted to be a part of that, but I didn't know anybody until I bumped into Keith. And the more and more I got to know Keith, you know. And more than just talking uh, about spiritual thing matters. Sometimes as much as I'm about playing the game of Monopoly or, or cards. No one could dare accuse Keith of cheating in a game. Because Keith held to his own integrity. And let me tell you something. He'd call you on if he felt like you weren't playing your, your dead level best on, on, on a game with him. Because, yes, Keith wanted to win. But Keith wanted to win fair and square. I don't think he had a cheating bone in his body. Now, there was some debate at one time between him and my ex-wife about playing Monopoly. We had to change the, the rules one time when we were, you know, I was dating with her. You know, we were... Started playing Monopoly. Of course, after the divorce, we changed it back. But the, the initial rules between me and Keith, when we were playing Monopoly, we were playing for blood. You know? As far as, you know, who gets what property. But when uh, Mike's wife came around, she was kind of like, you know, I want the rules changed to where if you buy one property, you should be able to buy one set without somebody just poaching on it. Now, Keith and I tolerated it, but you know, when we play Monopoly, 10 months after the, the, we split up, Keith and I went back to the same old rules that we were, because we felt like they were better. That's right, there, there are laws, and there are standards. You hear me? Do you hear me? There are laws and there are standards. And we might as well get, we might as well go there, okay? We might as well go there. Let's go to the Book of Mormon, folks, okay? Let's go to the Sermon on the Rebel. <laughs> I know we was expecting a conference talk. But what can I say? A lot's happened to me lately since uh, my original planning, and so we're going to go ahead. We're going to send the book of 3rd Nephi, okay? Jesus is serving on the rebel, and he's giving his higher law to the ancient inhabitants of the Americas. 
And can I tell you something? The way the higher law is delivered to the people of the ancient American Americas makes a little bit more sense than how uh, it is uh, with uh, Matthew. Now, I'm going to start with 3 Nephi chapter 12, verse 17. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Okay? To move this over. Don't you just love about large print scriptures, paper scriptures? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, one jot, nor one tittle, hath not passed away from the law, but in me it hath all been fulfilled. Okay, verse 20 it says, Therefore, come unto me, and be ye saved. For verily I say unto you, that except ye shall keep my commandments, which I have commanded you at this time, Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you don't up in the church, you know what the commandments are. You know what the standards are. Maybe you're like me. You you grew up in a different faith, and now you're uh, you're in the church. You're the only member of your family in the uh, immediate family that's in the church. And maybe one night they decide to watch a, a movie or something that's questionable. What do you do? I know it's hard, but you have to get up and walk, walk out. And I've been, I've been called, you know. I won't go James. He's a fatty daddy. He won't sit there and watch it with us. Now, am I perfect at that? No. But I also know that there's standards. There's a line I draw. And really, I watch TV for different reasons than, than most audiences, okay? I draw a line because most of what's on TV nowadays, most of what's on TV nowadays, Garbage. Plain truth, okay? I'm speaking it like I'm telling it, like I'm calling it. It's garbage. And we can do better. And we can be better. If we're expecting Hollywood, or the news media, or Washington, D.C., and uh, don't get me wrong, I love the political process. But I feel like people, through some negative, reactive rhetoric on both sides, have corrupted the process. process. Okay? Now, I do get my conservative ideology whenever it's needed, but I'll, but I'll also be honest with you and... And tell you when I feel like both sides are wrong. Okay? Because I think part of the problem is there's some people that live with what's known as tunnel vision spiritually. We can't be that way. Especially with the gospel. The gospel is more than just something linear. Like my, like my friend Brad. His view of the gospel was linear, you know? You say the prayer, you get saved. But oh well, you better live according to how Brad sees the commandments. But other than that, there's nothing to it. You, you get to go to heaven. That's it. But the more and more I read the Bible, I realized that that wasn't the truth. It wasn't going to work that way. 
It wasn't going to work that way. There was no way I could I could really do it that way. Okay. So now I've said my piece about what's needed to heal our land. I hope you find this helpful. I want you guys to take it easy. And I, God bless you. And I'll see you guys. It's tired, man. I've been trying new things. With Frank's Red Hot, I put that shit on everything. I will see you guys Monday night. Oh, come on, go. Thank you for enjoy listening to Liga Hona Light. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. The views expressed by this podcast are not necessarily the views of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They are the views of the podcaster, James Hendrick himself. Empower your pattern. 3525 South County Road, 1312, Odessa, Texas, 79765. Leah Hona Light adheres strictly to the standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with words of Latter-day Prophets. The Bible used in Leah Hona Light is the King James Bible. The Yahuna Light is a production of Empower, your P- uh, Empower Media, available on Spreaker, Google Podcast, Podcast Addict, Castbox, Spotify, and other places where podcasts are available.